Deathblade, Sidewinder, d d d d dairy. Watch time is over. It's heist time. Velvet Thunder. By a man in a yellow sweater. Hello, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. What's up, everyone? Adam from FWCI. This is Brooklyn Nine Nine, season eight, episode one, the good ones. This is uh, I see on the screen here, June twenty twenty. So we're in COVID. I guess that's what that is telling me, but very interested to see how the final season of Brooklyn Nine-Nine goes. If you do want early access to these videos, patreon.com slash FWCI is where you can get it for $5 redos. At the end of this season, I will be doing a recap, not just of season seven and season eight, but of the entire Brooklyn Nine-Nine series. Still figuring out exactly how I'm going to do that, but it might end up being a live stream. So stay tuned for an update on that. And uh, you may have seen at this point that what we do in the shadows is definitely going to be following up Brooklyn when this uh, series ends. And episode one of What We Do in the Shadows is already up, so if you like that show and you're already subscribed, good. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do because that will be coming sometime in June, not 2020. June 2024. The last episode, Peralta and Santiago had their baby. Captain Holt is back in the captain position at the end of last season as well. That was pretty much the only uh, new sort of big story movements that had happened in the uh, at the end of the final season. And let's not forget, we didn't get a Doug Judy wedding episode. Don't know what's going on with that. Still holding out for it. So let's see if we get it in this one. This is Brooklyn Nine-Nine, season eight, episode one. The good ones. It's how to high five your friends while staying six feet apart. Right now, the. <laughs> oh, okay, we're doing social distancing fives. The Vulcan scissor. That's a bad. Oh my god, where's the acclaimed? Scissor me, daddy! I just wanted to say goodbye. I turned in my resignation, I quit the force. Whoa! Rosa, what's going on? Oh, oh! I mean, at least you got it out in a high yeah, note that there, was Rosa. By far the best five. <laughs> What's the best five? Uh, Rose is quitting the force. I don't know. Is it a... Is it a red herring? Couldn't... I mean, COVID was a crazy time, especially to be making a TV show, so maybe there were actors who couldn't commit to it. So maybe we're losing Rosa in this one? That sucks if that's where we're going to start off. Oh, whoa. Now we're in 2021. Tell me everything that happened while I was gone. Well, as you know, Hitchcock retired the very first second he could. That's right. I couldn't wait to get out of there. Hitchcock's gone already? Does Charles sound like a podcast? Oh, because I'm listening to one right now. It's called Two Wrongs Makes a White, Lessons in Anti-Racism. Yeah. Oh, Christ. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Boy, oh, what are you doing? She quit after George Floyd was killed because she thought that she could do more good by becoming a PI that helps victims of police brutality. Oh, that's what Rose is doing now. Do my job and straight up crush it at Goat Simulator on my Switch. That's not something to be proud of. That's a real game, everybody. Goat Simulator exists. How's the cool new PI gig going? Uh, it's not that cool. I have a desk at a WeWork that I share with a Is she Jessica Jones now? Because I would believe that. And still works sometimes when good people are involved. Is that why you want to help? So you can make some point about policing? No. Oh, yeah, this is awkward. I'm meeting my client tomorrow. I'll text you the details. Yes, Jake and Rosa are back. How is this gonna go wrong though? I don't think you should be getting involved in this, Jake. Oh, this is already a tense episode. <laughs> Hello, Santiago. How's your lunch? Pretty bad, right? That he politely asked you about your lunch? It was small talk. Captain Holt always says that true friends sit in silence. Small talk is for strangers, strangers and, and con men. You know what, Terry? You're right. It is like a romantic relationship. That's what you got from what I said? You don't have a romantic relationship with Holt, <laughs> Amy. I'm sure Jake would probably be fine with it. But you don't. Come on. It wasn't easy getting her to agree to talk with a cop, so don't be too copish. Just be normal. Got it. Normal, not too copish. Won't be a problem. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> God. And I know how that sounds, but I'm not one of the bad ones who says they're one of the good ones. I'm actually one of the good ones who says they're one of the yeah. good ones. You're, you're overselling it a bit. I said I want to go home, so I tried to walk past them, and they grabbed me. Suddenly, I'm thrown on the ground, and they're yelling at me to stop resisting, which I wasn't. Oh, this is fucked. 5.45, 6 o'clock. So right at the end of a shift. Which means? Some officers like to make arrests at the end of their shift so they can work later and get extra overtime. 
Damn, that's messed up as well. It's just that the barbershop is my therapy. Mm. It's where I go to clear my mind, and that's hard to do with you there. So Boiler's trying to like overcompensate to be like anti-racist, and instead he's just being kind of shitty anyway. Which is pretty typical Boyle. But I get it. He's got very sincere motives. Suspect had suspicious item. Scary. It's clearly bogus. But an officer did break one of his fingers. Probably from tackling her to the ground. Yeah, or from pointing it so hard at everyone but himself. Uh, Peralta, just shut up. Why are you so weird at this, this episode? There was a rookie there, Janice Lee. If you can get her to confirm your client's story, I can help you. Here's her address. Uh, I doesn't feel like she did a great deal of help there, to be honest. I mean, she gave him the name, but... Dr. Cox, what are you doing here? And there is no way on God's green earth that you're ever talking to anyone involved in this case. Oh, he's the head of the patrolman's union. Shit. With you, there's only three things that I love in this whole world. <laughs> My ma, the NYPD, and Billy Joel. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's got good taste in music. Hello, Captain. It's so good to see you. Whoa. So, so good. What's with the bizarre eye contact and the weird way you're talking, Santiago? Did you join a cult? <laughs> oh, is that one of Terry's sex books? You mean one of Scully's sex books? <laughs> Which is why we have to do the exercises in this book. Please, sir. Please. If I agree. Oh, she should be doing the exercises from a sex book with Captain Hull. What's the next exercise? It is? Way too sexual. Wow. We're going to have to skip around a bit to make the... Okay. Good work. <laughs> O'Sullivan watched the body cam recording before it was corrupted, which means he might have the original footage, which means if we want proof, we need to break into the union and get it. Whoa, damn. Okay, easy there, Rosa. Obviously, things are a bit tense, but I believe that people still understand that we're here to help. Nope. Yeah, I saw something. It looked kind of like this. I don't talk to pigs. Copy that. <laughs> oh, wow, well, yeah. Yeah. It was a weird time. Not a weird time. I, I, I didn't even know how to describe what was going on back then. And now, I guess. As I meant every last zero. Wow, Charles, that was so nice of you. It was obviously a mistake, Scully! Why is Scully playing with a viewfinder, by the way? This isn't about you. And this case where a black woman was assaulted by the police has nothing to do with you either. So if you're not here to help, if you're just here to prove a point, then, man, I don't think we should work together anymore. And I definitely don't think we're friends. Oh, that sucks. Why are they starting the season off like this? Oh. Where are you? Brazil, baby. I got conned by a cam girl, but it turns out I love it here. <laughs> <laughs> then go down the main hall. This is important. It's your last bathroom stop on the whole floor. It's unisex and handicaps. All right, this... All right, Scully, you know what you're talking about. Yes. Oh, what do you no. think? Front row, Bob. Billy Joel. <laughs> Billy Joel is still touring, and it is crazy. Anything new lately? I started performing daily checks of my blood oxygen level during COVID because I feared for my life. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> We're not even friends. We're co-workers. I'm tired of Terry's stupid wow. book. Scully's book. <laughs> okay. Could I help you up, sir? I certainly hope so, sir. My name is Mitchell Keith Erickson. And well done, Peralta. Well done. Go back into the back room to complain, and they're all just sitting around trash talking Billy Joel. What? They said, Pe <laughs> yeah. "What a great distraction." Look, Boyle. It's great that you're trying to do better, but the way you're doing it is kind of messed up. Yeah, I've seen people make that mistake as well. I just donated to a great charity, but I won't tell you which one or how much. Good for you. <laughs> for black trans women, it was a thousand dollars. Couldn't help himself. Well, you did, because I got the footage. Oh, I'm gonna have to delete. That. <gasps> wow. <sighs> oh no, you're a villain. She's a villain. What a bitch. What is it with red-haired women with curly hair in this show being absolutely unhinged? Get my officers to revise their statements. And they'll be punished? No, there's no way I can suspend them. Suspend? I thought you would- Yeah, she's fucked. 
We have the footage and the proof and the evidence there. Until they get someone who sides with the officers. And the courts are a nightmare. Prosecutors were close. Wow, now we just get all the excuses. One of the only female captains in the NYPD is forced to quit, and you don't want me gone. I'm one of the good ones. And I know how that sounds, but I'm not one of the bad ones. Oh, God. Stop staring daggers at me. Let's just go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am a con man. I was trying to con about? you into believing everything is normal with me when oh. it is not. Kevin and I have separated. Oh. Oh, no, Kevin either? Fuck. It's been a tough year to be a black man and a police captain. Yeah, yeah, I can understand. Yeah, and human. Just in general, it's been rough. I made small talk with Peralta on five separate occasions, and he never even batted an eye. He just <laughs> blathered on about someone named uh, Wario. <laughs> Still can't beat Wario. <laughs> and while I'm not yet ready to talk about it, it's uh, nice feeling like I'm not alone anymore. That's unbelievably heartbreaking. Just so you know, I am not Raimi. We are Raimi. Just be glad I said it. Totally. <laughs> I guess getting the charges dropped was something. So, thanks to Rosa because you're not a cop. I hook you up with those five stars on yet. <laughs> thanks for that. You're dealing with things in your own way, and I get that it's not on you to make me feel okay about my choices. Apology accepted. And just because our choices are different doesn't mean we're not family. Yeah, I see the message that they're trying to make with this now. Not a doctor. Oh my god. I see exactly what people were saying about this season. Like, this is a very, very heavy episode. And it flash forward to 2021, so I'm guessing that's when the episode actually, like, went, like, came out sort of thing. Which was still full-blown COVID. We had lockdowns here at the time and stuff like that. The whole story there with Jake and Amy saying we have different views on this, but it's okay. We can still be civil with each other. That's obviously a big comment to, you know, everybody that was watching this because at that point it was just absolute madness. It was, I, I, I kind of got through COVID pretty good. I had it a couple of times and I didn't sort of struggle with lockdowns too bad. My job was, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know the word. You're screaming at the TV right now. Uh, necessary. You know the thing. So that didn't really change. My partner could be at her job. That didn't change at all. Essential. Essential service. That's right. We were both essential service. But the world, like the exterior world and everything else that was going on, it was just such a miserable time. And it was miserable for very necessary reasons. And there were a lot of very legitimate complaints that needed to be heard and a lot of stuff intersected around that time. COVID, they mentioned George Floyd in this, that was just before COVID as well. Like it was just such a, um, a sad time that we were dealing with those things the way that we were dealing with them. So this would have been a very, very difficult season to write. I think I saw somebody in the comments saying, correct me if I'm wrong about this, that they had a lot of the season written and then they rewrote the entire thing when COVID hit because they wanted to tell a different story and, and they didn't think that the happy-go-lucky police characters were really going to be, um, not, they, they were inappropriate, but they may not be, like, they may not be reading the room very well at that time releasing that kind of thing. So very interesting that they took the um, opportunity to do this and with all the police brutality stuff that was being talked about, Brooklyn Nine-Nine is a great uh, vehicle for them to, you know, make these statements. And the episode was still uh, pretty good. Uh, Amy and Holt's storyline, again, that got very, very sad <laughs> towards the end. But I liked that, uh, even though it was a little bit silly with the, uh, the romance book. But I just liked what happened with that story that Amy noticed that he made small talk and um, that was out of character for him. Boyle, like, trying to overcompensate um, for Terry just because Terry's black. I mean, a lot of people out there were trying to do that at the time and I'm sure there probably still is, but I, I don't even know how to talk about those kind of, like, topics because I just don't care what, like, color somebody's skin is. It does not affect how I interact with them one way or the other it really really doesn't like even um uh you know i worked in contact centers and stuff and people if somebody had like a really unusual name a lot of people would just like not say the person's name because they didn't know how to pronounce it and stuff like that on the call 
And I was always just in. I would have a crack at the name. They would sometimes correct me. It's actually pronounced this way. The fact we were different races, we, these people, a lot of like, you know, Asian people on the phones and like Greek people. Oh my God, some of their names are insane. It's just a normal conversation. I don't know what the learning experience is to come from this story, but it just really doesn't have any impact on how I look at the world one way or the other. So, uh, but I see a lot of this stuff out there. You hear it everywhere so it's a very relevant topic and uh i, I hope this series does lighten up a little bit because that's not really something that i want to talk about every single episode because it is a very charged issue and people are going to take exception to this and that and you know i, I don't want the comments to become like a bit of a cesspool of like oh well i'm vaccinated but you're not vaccinated well yeah, blah blah like I, I hate that shit but i definitely understand why brooklyn 99 has um dipped their toe into this subject matter and i do appreciate the fact that it exists and i appreciate the uh, messages that they were putting out there in that episode and respect their right to do it but let me know in the comments what you thought about this episode and let me know what episode number you're most excited for on season eight and uh, i'll bookmark it and you know i'll make sure i wear my best Michael on Michael t-shirt for the occasion. And as always, everyone, be well, stay safe, look after your friends, see you in the next video, peace.